extremely clear in this debate. This is not a debate about changing the education system of Bangladesh in general. This is a debate about three or four videos that were posted online. And thus, I think the impact of this has been vastly over-exaggerated by opening governments to begin with, but we'll deal with that in a rebuttal. Two things vastly in this speech. One, some responses to the stuff we've just heard from opening government and why it falls out of the debate almost immediately. And secondly, on the value of this website in terms of being able to change the social discourse that exists in Bangladesh and why it's uniquely positioned as an organization that could make a difference within Bangladeshi culture uniquely. Firstly, then in responses to opening government. The first thing they talk about is why this is entirely bad for the members of Kemena schools and the employees because they fear for their lives or fear that they're going to be attacked by extremists. Three responses to this. One, I think we are okay with things like giving increased protection to levels, uh, levels of protection to the people who work for this company, because insofar as there are legitimate fears about these people's safety, then presumably the state has a duty to intervene and protect and make sure that their safety is going to be somewhat protected. Note that these are extremists, extreme radicals. They are not the state that is condemning these videos. And thus I think the state is probably okay to protect them in exactly the same way that we protect everybody else from terrorism in the same way. Two, I think it's easy to be able to adjust the structure of these companies to make it less risky for the people who work for them. That is, if you are a company that produces online video content, that is, you produce lectures on how to do things like making a CV, it's actually not that hard to move out of a centralized office and do something like working from home instead. Because realistically, the types of content that you have to produce are things like speaking over a PowerPoint presentation based on the, the skill set of how to make a CV. There is no necessity to reveal your physical location in doing that. And I think because it is an online company, you're able to maintain your anonymity to a pretty great degree. That means you're not actually likely to be impaired in the way that open government is safe. Thirdly, though, I think presumably you already feel like you're being watched by the ex extremists on either side of the house, because insofar as this is something that has happened, you realize that you are being scrutinized constantly by extremists and your content is being policed by these individuals. While I think that uh, maybe in a world where you take it down, you maybe feel like you've appeased those people, I still think you're always feeling like you are being watched and the things in your video are being scrutinized quite highly by these types of individuals. Then, therefore, I think you always feel like there is some risk on you. And so even if it is marginally greater on our side of the house, I ultimately think because the state can guarantee your safety, it's probably not something that is a major win for opening government and probably doesn't mean that the entire education system of Bangladesh collapses and everybody continues to live in horrible poverty in the way that they make out. The second thing that they say is that this changes the perception of 10-minute school for people in Bangladesh in general and makes them less likely to use it. Um, and, and, and the mechanisms they give are like, one, schools are less likely to implement these things in the curriculum, or two, because parents won't let their children watch these videos. I think the thing is, though, this is three or four videos produced by an educational school that is vastly respected for producing quite good content that is able to, for example, make you get a job because you've written a better CV. I don't understand why the response is, you can't watch anything the 10-minute school produces ever, as opposed to you just shouldn't watch these three or four videos from these individuals if it is true that these videos are so specifically controversial to the people of Bangladesh. I think in this case then, it's unclear why it, why it is that they're going to not access any of the other educational resources. If they are as high quality and as are respected as opening government make them out to be, I think in those cases where, where people are so turned off by that controversy, and obviously this debate is probably a wash because they still watch the other videos and just choose not to watch those specific videos. I'm unclear then it necessarily has any impact that they want to see. So let's talk about being able to shift cultural discourse in Bangladesh and why this website is so specifically good at that. Because I think it is really important and can't just be traded off that we have to combat ideas like sexism or combat ideas like homophobia in these societies because people do it like lots of women exist and lots of like LGBT people also exist and are hugely oppressed minority group. That is to say that these people often face forms of, uh, uh, like of oppression that, that are so specifically great that it means that they cannot like live their life in a free way at all. I think it's so far as they are incredibly vulnerable groups, we probably should care about their quality of life in this debate. I think firstly, let's establish why people are likely to listen to 10 minutes school when it comes to these videos. I think to, and to the extent that these are seen as informative or useful resources that are able to guide individuals in their life, that make you more likely to get a job in the first place, that is why people watch these videos, then you probably see, one, these people as reliable actors, given that they have been able to help people in the past or have been able to help you get a job and have given you the skills in doing so. But secondly, you see them as beneficent actors as well, because clearly in all of their other videos, they're equipping people with skills to be able to try and help them in the first place. I think then it's much it's quite hard to, for, to portray them as a maleficent organization that wants to see the fall of, of values in Bangladesh, but rather people are likely, because they already respect 10 minutes school because of the things they have done in the past, to at least be open to the discourse that they bring about in these videos. But secondly, and importantly, and crucially, they, are, they have a, a unique ability to be able to explain this within the cultural context of Bangladesh, because note that the response of 10 minute school to this isn't to just sit silently and pretend that they aren't being critiqued by extremists whatsoever, but rather we say there is now a, a specific onus upon 10 minute school to explain why the criticisms of this extremist group, as in saying that they are anti-Muslim or whatever, are specifically criticisms that are wrong. 
why it is that these are things that are in line with Muslim values and why therefore people should continue to use the, this website in the long run and should not be put off by these extremists, extremist criticism. But this is, where, uh, this is where this is specifically important, because note that there are other generic resources about how to write a CV online, but there aren't very many Bangladeshi ones that have access to an audience and also have access to expertise of the cultural context of Bangladesh. I think in so far as they're able to explain these concepts within the cultural context of Bangladesh, using their unique expertise as an organization that exists within that country, then they are best able to access the hearts and minds of the people because they understand their values to begin with better than a generic Western LGBT or rights organization. If that means that you're better able to access people's actual culture and better able to genuinely uh, persuade them of the things that you are saying, then I think that means you can make a genuine difference to this individual's life. Not in the comparative, people can use other generic CV resources and probably ju be just as well off with the educational, sy educational systems they use. I'll take CG. How is it possible that at the same time you claim that OG is over impacting their case, but somehow your videos are able to change the minds okay, of the people, okay. like one or the other? Our, our, uh, thanks. Our case is not that this fixes all problems of sexism or homophobia, but rather the impact of this case is that you begin to shift cultural discourse. That is to say, when you give in to the extremists and decide that you don't want to have these videos up in the first place, you're seen as being complicit in their views or accepting their views. That's because the moment you were criticized, you said, oh, actually, no, we were wrong. We shouldn't have posted those things to begin with. But note that that's specifically harmful when this is a respected educational organization that is like an important part of forming people's worldviews or informing what they know about the world. Because insofar as that organization in its position as an informer of public opinion or an informer of, a, like, of public knowledge admits that they were wrong and says that you shouldn't care about these concepts, then you further entrench all of those biases for years. I think the problem with that is that it becomes very hard to ever have those conversations in future again, because insofar as you think that your educators, the people that you trust to give you life skills, agree with these extremists, then you lend so much legitimacy to their extreme platform that it becomes very hard to ever be able to call it out. I think the uniquely 10 minute school have an, an ability to explain these issues in the culture of Bangladesh, in the context of that culture, and therefore have the best chance of creating change. And because of that, we're proud to oppose. Okay, we thank the leader of opposition very much. And we're very happy to call upon the deputy prime minister to continue the case for opening government. Uh, am I audible? Can someone thumbs up if you can hear me? Great. Uh, if I can ask for POIs, uh, if you can wave at me a piece of paper, ideally. three things in this speech. First, I'm going to explain what the response is likely to be and why is it so problematic. The second, I'm going to explain why the startup is so important and what exactly the loss actually entails. Last, on liberalization and how we're going to get that discourse anyway, at least in the long term. Let's then talk about what the response is and why this threat is so serious. The first thing I want to know is that in Bangladesh, there is a actual history of attacks by Islamic extremists on a variety of different people, right? There's been a massive turbulent period of dozens of like atheist bloggers or like just people who were like not particularly Muslim being attacked, being stabbed, being killed, like outside of their homes when they were walking to offices, things like this. This is something that individuals obviously have to fear. And this is something that people obviously want to avoid. I want to know that this is not just like a couple of extremists, this is actually a serious threat that people will feel at the point at which it is actually vocalized. How does this impact then um, the functioning of, 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 of the Demonet School? Like the first thing we tell you is that you are just less likely to either keep your existing employees or get more employees. Notice that the startup is quite big and insofar as it needs to grow to be able to do things like produce more videos, you just need more people to be involved. Obviously, people are going to be extremely wary in terms of like cooperating with that startup at the point at which you can literally fear for your life if you do so. Like, 
their response then is like, ah, but like we can do some things where like we're going to be protecting the privacy. Like note that if you are making those videos, you A, like your voice probably has to be somehow in the video you or like your face, you will be found. But like even the fact that they, they ignore the fact that Raf tells you this is a legal like organization, right? Like the names of these people have to be publicly listed. It's just not true that you can just remove yourself completely. That's literally illegal. But then, then they say like, uh, but like the state has a duty to, to protect these people. Let's then talk about the government because I think the government is actually gonna also get quite hostile with you or if not like, uh, definitely it's not going to try to help you. Why is this true? Because recognize that if you are thinking about the government of Bangladesh, a lot of legitimacy of the government is actually dependent on religious leaders. Maybe not necessarily religious, religious extremists themselves, but even though we think that the government is also afraid of religious extremists, but on at least on religious leaders, know that there is a very prominent Islamic party in like in, in, in Bangladeshi government that's influencing quite a lot of decision the, uh, that the government is making. Know that the government already made concessions to like Islamist leaders and is uh, Islamist extremists when like they had like the defamation law where, where like there was massive crackdowns on anyone who was like insulting Islam. We think this is because like the leaders tend to depend on, 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 on religious leaders because they tend to be present in rural areas, they have influence over people. So like all the mobilization that the government needs is kind of coming from specifically religious leaders. What this means then, if these extremists speak against this, and there's a big chance that given those are quite like controversial topics like LGBT rights, obviously the government might fear that this is something that they shouldn't be supporting because they might get backlash as well. Given that the government is dependent on these actors, it's very, very unlikely they're going to be providing you some like sort of, even if they have a duty, like whatever, they won't be able to do that. More likely they actually try to undercut you within given like the business um, environment in Bangladesh, it's probably quite easy to make it really, really hard for you to operate in that. Um, so you're more likely to like lose everything you have or at least not grow more. We also tell you that like, if get your startup, you need sponsors, you need people to give you money, like given that you connection yourself with the company, like having your name on like the website as a company or as a donor is going to become incredibly something incredibly difficult. You have less incentive of people to do this. You have less money for your company. It's obviously problematic because A, you just can't produce more content, but it can endanger your existing content as well. At the point at which you don't have money to like maintain it, at the point at which like you just have less people watching it, so you have less income, it's more likely that you can lose everything you've built so far as a result of that backlash, right? What do they tell you? They say, oh, but like actually people are not going to be alienated just for videos, like people will be open to that discourse. Like, notice that this is a massive change of what the society currently like thinks about right insofar as society is quite conservative we don't think that they're going to be like hmm, let me think about this it's more likely that this can be portrayed as something that the co like the company or the startup is getting to be like like western corporate which means that you are more likely to actually give up on it completely especially if you yourself like align with like islamic values Notice that this means that most people will not listen, but even if some people listen, like their mechanism is like cultural discussion and somehow you're gonna be shifting values. I think that's quite weak. I don't think they're gonna actually achieve much. We think the more, the more difficult, the, the more important thing is that you are not risking losing something that is incredibly, incredibly important for like a lot of, for a lot of kids and a lot of students in the country. I think Raf explains and they kind of agree in terms of how important the startup is, right? It's the fact that there's a massive rural urban divide in Bangladeshi educational system where people can't access like, like when this can replace or complement the high school curriculum. This can allow people to like either just get qualifications so they can have some chance for social mobility or get to private universities sim or, or, or things like that. Also to note that it is in Bengal language, which is all other resources and different languages or in English is something that you can specifically access even if you are from a pretty much if you are from a poorer background where you didn't have a chance to get to 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 be um, to like learn a different language. Given that we think if you're weighing up the top half, the weak mechanism of like some sort of cultural change might happen by like the six people who are going to be perceptive versus even if they prove it's not 100% like it, but I think we've given you many reasons as to why you're endangering your, your content and the company. The threat of losing all of this and not being, uh, I'll take closing, opening. Quick, please. Again, we tell you that it is very likely that this firm should change because they know exactly what the narratives are. Isn't it more likely to do that, especially when they are probably not as profitable yet, given that they're yeah, okay. a startup? Cool. Yeah, just sure.
So, okay, so you will have to explain to me how do they change. So they probably won't stop being a firm. So you will have to have people public. You probably won't be able to get the security like people are going to be making you, like giving you bodyguards, given that the government is going to be against you as well. As long as you say they change, I don't think there's many mechanisms they can actually change. Also, like the extremists can just find you. That's quite easy. Cool. Um, given how important it is, I think even the threat of losing it all is just more important. How will we get liberalization? Not that we can get the conversation on our side when you give more education to people so they are more exposed to culture from abroad they have more time to like read stuff when you have like more free time as you are more economically like like self sustainable you have you are more likely to move to cities where you already have some sort of communities maybe we are delaying having the conversation but we will have it eventually and we are not risking losing a company that's incredibly incredibly important for so many people for all those reasons so proud to stand in open government Can you hear me? We thank the Deputy Prime Minister very much, yes, uh, and we are happy to invite the Deputy Leader of Opposition. If you could uh, say something else, please, just to make sure that you're audible. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, you're loud and clear right now. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll start in three, two, one. OG doesn't engage. I gave them two abilities to do so. We tell you that this firm needs to change either way. Either it will live in a way in which they know that they're likely to be harmed, physically harmed or whatever, by the extremists, or they decide that they budge. And they always need to listen to whatever the, those extremists are telling them, because either way, they will always be very scrutinized. They will always be very much like seen as to what exactly the, the content is that they're producing, meaning more and more they're going to have to shift toward those kind of narratives. And they're never going to be able to have a say, because at a point of which when you agree that at some point you need to like you, you need to budge into this kind of extremists, you need to agree with whatever their narrative is. This is when you do, you set up a narrative that this is something that you're scared of and something that you're always is going to allow them to do. We think that on our side, we think that this is probably not a debate about education. Given that this is about 10 videos and on both sides there is some access towards it. I think if education was so crucially important, I think on both sides people will be wanting to access it. Maybe just not those 10 videos that we are talking about, but I think to all of the other stuff they probably still are. Notice also that we tell you that there are still other, other ways in which you can access education. Probably you can still get some kind of groups in which you talk to, but also in terms of YouTube, it is not all in English. I think very like there are more and more accessible things in the first place. This is rather about the way in which we want to perceive education, how free we want it to be, and how we want this institution to be acting. This is a crucial thing. OG never responds to so they have the minimal impact of claiming that they're improving the education in that country, despite already having a government education and people being able to like access it. I don't understand why 10 minute videos is something that is going to drastically change the way that people live their lives just because they know how to write a CV. I'm unsure as to what their impact is in the first place. So why do we have more uh, better content on our side? Note, firstly, it, like in terms of what you're giving to these people, I think that on both sides, you can give them stuff that are very basic stuff in terms of like CVs and stuff like that. The difference is on which side can you give them stuff that otherwise they don't have access to, meaning where can you cater to them in terms of LGBT in a way that they understand it. This is why we think that on our side, given that they're probably going to be specific to Bangladesh, meaning that because they're not an international company, they need to produce something that is specific to their country that people understand and it is intuitive to people because confirmation bias is the best, best way for for people to agree with what you're saying. This means very likely that the way that they're presenting their stuff is to explain why this is something that is actually within the Muslim culture, because there's nothing that, that is saying to you that this is something inherent that this it, it must be against. So be, basically they're interpreting the, their mus the, the Islam in a way that is saying, this is somebody that you could also uh, that you could also explain. This is the only way for them to keep being relevant and to pe pe people to keep listening to them. I think this is a crucial thing because it's the only way for actually get access to the young people and to the people who want to get educated. I think very likely that this is the only way to do it because on the other side, the only way you can get access to all of those kind of stuff is literally through English language, through people who are inherently Islamophobic in the West and so on. I think the only way that at least you can get them some knowledge about what this is like for people to feel related or for people to feel as if they don't have to hide this from all their lives, that there is a future in terms of those kind of stuff, I think much more likely on our side. Secondly, it's setting a standard because those 10 videos are a message. 
This is a message that is saying we are not going to listen to you even if you threaten us, as opposed to deleting them and then trying to present this kind of new videos that you have later on. It is a standard from which you deviate. Meaning on our side, this was the most extreme thing that they're going to do because it was probably quite Western, but then it gets better and better in terms of integrating, in terms of what the other stuff is. This is why more likely that in the future you have less and less threats because they start realizing that this is actually something that is in that is close to what actually their beliefs are. As opposed to on their side, you remove this and what you can do every time you become something a bit more close to consent, a bit more close to LGBT and stuff like that, you are going to be threatened again and you will never be able to actually improve your content in any kind of way. I think much less likely they actually can have any types of ideas in terms of improving, like caring about minorities, caring about anything that is not simply conservative Muslim. And I think this is why very unlikely that it can actually have any benefits in terms of educating those people. I think at best what OG can show to you that maybe they have a bit more educated people, but if those educated people who are exactly going to have more power in the future in a country of Bangladesh, I think this is a huge harm because if you want Islamophobic, if you want like sexist and if you want uh, homophobic people to be in power and have, have the most of it, if they want to have big impacts like that, I think this is exactly the harm on their side. We would rather have them maybe a bit less educated, but at least know that there is something else about the people that live out there, people who they should be considering and have empathy to. I think this is a crucial impact that they never engage with. I'll take closing yeah so if the state and the families and the lobbyists and all of those who oppose you being a liberal are so powerful how in hell a 10 minutes be you going to change that we tell you that the moderates in Bangladesh are not the same as extremists in Bangladesh. A lot of people are willing to listen to this kind of stuff. This is the first place why a startup decided to make a videos about it. The vast majority of people are not strongly opinionated about it and are willing to listen about stuff like that. I think probably you're not making everybody like having a pride parade, but I think very likely people at least hear about the ideas and are more willing to engage with it, especially because they're catered specifically to them. I think much more likely on our side, at least people are open to those kind of ideas ideas as opposed to seeing them as directly something opposing to them. Lastly, are they more efficient in terms of like less people working to, for the stop and so on? I think firstly, I'm this is not a video farm. This is not about producing as many videos as possible. This is probably about producing quality videos for the people to watch and to learn something from. This is why you don't need huge amount of people, but rather you need people who are very interested in providing quality content. This is why I think that the people who are staying are people who are willing to even risk some kind of a stuff in order to keep being a part of this organization. I think we don't need many people you don't need them to be visible og is lying that the names need to be published or whatever this is literally not true in any of the other firms but also they can go international and very likely they get support for it more likely internationally why is it true firstly because they're exactly showing the message that education should be free and this is something that westerners are very likely to buy into secondly especially if there are tags or if they threaten some more this is when the west will say this is enough and we need to stand behind them our resources will go there go fund pages will rise up and so on very likely to get the protection and i think crucially so you get more exposure you can grow more and stuff like that we probably get more impacts in terms of education too on our side i think especially when you feel threatened this is when the westerns but not only the westerns who, who are like very liberal or whatever muslims in the west who maybe have have seen that this is not the, the stuff that is in in conflict here their, their own religion and uh, like, like uh, respecting people who are of different orientation right you have people who actually are poor from bangladesh and who have re, re, like rose up in different environments and stuff like that, I think very likely that you get support for that. But notice also, they never respond to why government would not be doing such kind of things, except for government is scared too. I think at the point of view when government cannot negotiate with terrorists in all of the other stuff, I think very likely that it has to show where the line is. When it comes to education of new generations, this is not something that should be considered. And the point of which when you show the, the, the standards of how far you're willing to go, I think much more likely that you, you give less power to the extremists. All of those reasons I'm proud to oppose. Thank you very much to the Deputy Leader of Opposition. If everybody's ready, I'm very happy to call upon the Member of Government to start the case for the closing government. Can you hear me? I'm starting in three, two, one, go. I'm gonna do three very simple things in this speech. First, I'm gonna prove why there is low impact of these videos when they're individually considered. 
Two, I'm going to detail and provide actual mechanisms on why people will drop the app, mechanisms that were missing in OG. And thirdly, I'm going to detail and provide concrete mechanisms on why this is crucial for the kids in the long term, which was challenged by OO and not solved by OG. First, why are these videos not very useful to change people's mind individually considered in the short term? Three reasons why here. First, very first, because there's little explanation. It's just 10 minutes video. The same reasons why OO told you that this is just 10 minutes in the part of the speech when they like to rebuttal is the same reason why they're not going to get a lot of exposure to this particular content. So this particular content is going to get at best 10 minutes, 10 videos, 100 minutes. This is difficult to change anything. Second, because it's difficult to combat years and years of education that is different, that has been different, and that has set your values for several years. Thirdly, because it's very difficult to go against the ideology that the people that you most love, that you most respect, your father, your teacher at the school, the imam at the mosque, is very difficult to go against them. And not only very difficult, but also they don't have 10 minutes to refute the things they teach you in your magic app, but rather they have hours and hours and more hours of every day in their life to refute whatever you saw in 10 minutes. What is the consequence of this threefold? First, that in the short term, they're not going to change anything. Secondly, that this is only a principle fight of maintaining something which gets people angry, and hence it's not impact in the real life. And lastly, that what will happen or what should happen in our world, and this is a direct response to all and how the world would look like, is that the app would drop the videos, all of the videos relating this type of content, obviously now, and yes, for the future. So the app would commit not to have this type of videos with LGTB content or consent, and they would just focus in those which are educational, as in math, language, CB, rhetoric, etc. So we think that these videos individually considered are not very useful, as opposed to what I'm going to tell you later on, why are they useful on the long term step by step. That's the first thing, the videos individually considered change nothing, even if they have 10 minutes to do so. Secondly, why do we believe that parents are going to oblige kids not to join the app? Look, OG asserted that people would drop the app. OO challenged them correctly that why is this the case? We're going to tell you several reasons why people will stop accessing the app if they maintain this. First, parents from these kids who live in Bangladesh are profoundly religious and profoundly conservative due to a number of reasons. A, there are poor society, which 50 years ago was not very uh, uh, lectured in schools, which have strong history of the state exerting influence with a strong religion that exerts influence on those people. So they're pretty conservative. Second, they want the best thing for their kids. So they are afraid that if they keep accessing to a platform who has bad press from people that exert a lot of pressure, such as extremist Muslims, they could be hurt for the fact that they access it. Third, they don't understand really what is the usefulness of this tool because they never know what it is. They didn't study it with it, so they don't understand the intrinsic value of the app. It's possible that even in some countries, in some part of the country, when in Bangladesh there's very extremist people like in the government, because there's like extremist part of the country, probably they'll even ban it. And the consequence of all of this is that they'll react against the app. Why against all the app and not only the concrete videos? Well, it's very simple. First, because they understand this association, the classic dominant fallacy. So they think that if those people produce X kind of content, even if they produce another kind of content, probably they'll also try to bias your kid somehow. Secondly, because difficulty to discern which content is okay and which no. And thirdly, because they would be suspicious. And as a parent, what is most important for him is to protect his children or her children. Hence, they would stop him to access to something that they don't think is very valuable at all. And then they would not access. Is this to say that 100% of the people would stop accessing? No but probably 30%, 40%, 50% of children whose parents are worried about the fact that they go to this and the Muslims or radical Muslims and say that this app is bad and the content is bad would probably drop off the children. That being said, why is this app pretty important for the kids? OO challenged that this changes nothing. 
Look, this is true individually considered for one video, but it is false when you consider the whole content that they access to. Why is this the case? First, because when they access to this type of technology, they engage more. It's short. It's specially designed for them to be popular. The experts design the content. There is no pressure as opposed to the formal education where there's a teacher pressuring you to good grades. So they access to a lot of content, content that they engage you and motivates themselves to continue studying, maybe sometimes in the formal education, and other times not in the formal education, but rather in the content of the app. But the fact that there is technology that is especially designed to be engageable, that is pretty popular among the people who are young, that other friends do access to that app, makes that it goes and they access more, especially those who are most disfavored, who cannot go to the school every day because they need to work. They will be accessing to content, which is very important, which allow them to access the university and stay engaged. The consequence of this is that they stop accessing a lot of them and hence they have a worse training in their early life they have less jobs and less possibility to access to good jobs to good universities in the future why is this important in the long term because look educated people tend to be more liberal and more pro lgtb in the future because if they get all of this training several things happen First, when you get further education, that implies more contact with Western sources. Probably this app gives you also access to investigation, to read other media, even if it is not about this content. But you will get access to things like the New York Times, the Washington Post. So you get more access, more notice about things that probably you will keep accessing in the future. Second, because this further education, either informal through the app or formal through the education which you get engaged with thanks to the app, permits you to have different people which you know, which gets you more knowledgeable of the people that exist and more respectful towards them. You get exposed to more critical thinking when you maintain yourself in the formal and informal education. Maybe in 10 years, 20 years time, that is a long time to get an impact, but probably those kids who stay would have access to more education, to more universities, to more jobs, to more exposure, and then the impact of achieving a Bangladesh with more, uh, uh, permitting a more, with more liberalism is real. For all these reasons, very proud to be part of this. Antonio, you're still unmuted. <laughs> Okay, we thank the member of government very much for their speech, and we're very happy to call upon the member of opposition to start a case for closing opposition. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, okay. I believe. I will start in a second. Okay, I will start now. Okay, so in the beginning of my speech, I will explain to you why we believe that 10 minutes school will not be safer if we if they remove those videos, meaning why this uh, method is not effective. First reason, because Bangladesh is a religious country and news like this will get a lot of attention, meaning a traditional media will inform you about it as a TV, as newspaper. On social media, a lot of uh, these topics will be posted, meaning that a lot of people already in status quo portray them as pro-LGBT. If they remove this, uh, they would not change perception of themselves that they once like uh, supported this message. Uh, and we say that uh, second reason is that they are targeted as anti-Muslim, meaning that uh, that is um, that assaults a lot of people that uh, uh, that uh, feel uh, that associate themselves in, as Muslims as in, in Bangladesh, and we say that is a lot of people. Meaning that is uh, that uh, another reason is that negative reaction that is created when those that ba this backlash happened is a lot of stronger than a uh, positive one that may occur uh, if they remove it. We say that th that positive reaction won't happen. Third reason is that that religious extremists may not change their opinion if they. Pass 
publish uh, uh, if they just remove it, but we say they may change it if they like publish some video where, where they say they are on their side, they are not pro LGBT, they don't stand for women's rights and so on. We say that is high, highly unlikely to happen, but uh, why is that important? Because for religious extremists, uh, just for you to remove it won't be enough because you, they believe you, they portray you as evil. They want to save their nation uh, of you and they basically, uh, their core uh, values are uh, assaulted. And we say uh, for these reasons that that method is not effective. And uh, it is important to establish what are the active harms that we are bringing to you that will happen if we do this method. First of all, OG just assumes that uh, you, uh, that um, it builds its case on premise that uh, in our world, uh, those those like uh, people uh, from the middle school will be banned and no one will ever have the benefits that they are bringing. We say that uh, uh, their main medium is YouTube. They post their, their videos on YouTube, meaning that YouTube is American owned company, not some, uh, uh, some uh, Muslim organization, especially not like extremist organization from Bangladesh can remove it. And we say that uh, YouTube is especially pro LGBT Western company that stands for these values. And we see uh, that uh, uh, YouTube as a company doesn't want bad PR from themselves. Even if those uh, organizations stop working on our side of the house, 10 million school, we say that those videos will still stick and people will, see, will be able to uh, use them. Uh, so existing videos won't be deleted. Okay, now on international and dom domestic effects of this, uh, this uh, what you're proposing. First, our opening briefly talked about international effects, but they didn't mechanize it enough, and I will do that in my speech first. We say uh, that uh, this this message that they, uh, they like, uh, I'll take later, uh, we say that this message that they, um, uh, they get that backlash, uh, got a lot of attention from Western media. Why is that so? Because it is controversial. It goes against our Western values. We debate this on uh, UDC, meaning that a lot of people hear about this in Western world. So if they continue to oppress, more people will, uh, will hear about it. We say that it is easier for, uh, for West to support existing organization uh, that exists in Bangladesh than to go in Bangladesh and form their own. That, uh, that uh, requires less resources. Second, uh, it is more important, this, this is the better way for people from Bangladesh to listen to your message. If you like support some existing organization, their native uh, like speakers, people that look like them and that they feel closer to. So uh, also we see that people in Bangladesh usually have some Western bias because they feel that that gap between them and uh, people from the West is too big, and for those reasons, we think that uh, Western organizations should support uh, those uh, those existing people. That is few of those existing organizations that are pro women's rights and pro LGBT. Who can help them? First, we see uh, pro LGBT movement, pro feminist organization, privileged individuals, and other educational platforms that want that heard about their uh, struggles uh, in this time. Why they want to help you? First, because of the pure empathy. Empathy. They feel their struggle. Uh, second is because of good PR. Uh, uh, for example, those uh, feminist organizations don't want to be portrayed uh, just uh, as some individual that only care about some uh, some uh, first world problems and so on. They want to make an impact that, that they uh, like did they help these uh, disfranchised individuals? Also, like some other education platforms may, can make co collaboration. How can they help? First, by donating money, meaning that this money will help them spread the message, improve security, Im uh, employ more people if, it, uh, if uh, it happens that some of them leave. Second, educational collaboration, uh, meaning some platforms that they can collaborate to, some teachers that can uh, help them improve their content. Uh, then on domestic effects of this move. First, we say that over time, this will lead to less backlash. First time when we see something that we find really strange, we react strongly. But after some time, we maybe uh, we will become used to it. Less, uh, a second time, we will react 10% less and so on. We say that um, LGBT and women's rights will be more acceptable. It will open a discussion in the country. We see that uh, more people from Bangladesh also, other than this organization, will take place and like uh, try to argue for those rights. Also, we see that 
if we remove this contact, this is clear yeah. how that is coming from CO. Like if we remove it, it creates spillover effect on other changes, social changes that we achieve to improve human rights in uh, this country. Because you admit these organizations are power, you uh, you obey them, and you uh, they feel more powerful, meaning that they will uh, be able to demand more to move that line that we set, like with some uh, some uh, benefits that we um, already established. Also, we see that. It is uh, is incredibly discouraging for LGBTQ plus minorities and women because one uh, one only one organization that stand for their rights that one that has like um, a lot of good image in them them in society or uh, and they that gave them hope it will not be on their side. Okay, why people will continue to use this platform? Because it's free, because it's good ed educational content, because it is accessible to many people. Uh, it is good alternative if some uh, persons have bad schooling. It is customer based, meaning that they already have some established group of supporters. And uh, uh, final reason, this is most important, not everyone is, is religious extremists in Bangladesh. Like we uh, believe that most people, especially young, will not care about this issue, rather support them please oppose okay we thank the member of opposition very much and if, if everyone is ready we're very happy to call upon the government whip to conclude the government bench hello can you hear me I'm starting in three, two, one. I'm going to do mainly two things in this speech. First of all, I'm going to clarify the wash of the opening half and explaining why actually these, these videos are very useful for education, but they are not useful for indoctrination in, in, in liberal values. And secondly, I will deal with closing opposition. Okay, starting with opening opposition and the wash of opening half. The problem of the tension of the, of the opening half was that for, for opening opposition, these videos were very effective for adoctrination, but really but very ineffective in order to educate people. And the, for the opening government, it was the other way around. What I am actually going to explain is why Antonio's extension solved this tension and explains to you why it is very useful for education, but it is not for adoctrination, for mainly this reason. In education, there is very useful these videos because the very single reason that these kids usually don't have other sources of education. That means that if you are a very rich guy in Bangladesh that have three tutors, a very good school, and your parents are Nobel Prizes, probably there is no need of this app, and this app has very low impact. The point is that most of Bangladesh kids don't have this situation. They have to, uh, the, 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 the tutors are too expensive for, for them. They have no money, they are poor. They live in rural areas. They have zero access to educa formal education or very little access or the education is very bad. And thirdly, their parents have no idea about the formal education. They cannot help them at home and therefore they have no sources. When this is the situation, this video are very important for your education because it's mostly the only source that you have. If you want to learn something about English, where do you go? To the app. If you want to know something about Bangladesh history, where do you go? To the app. If you want to know something about maths, where do you go? To the app. Because it's the only source that you have. Meanwhile, and this is crucial for the debate, indoctrination, adoctrination is the other way around. You have plenty of sources for this, even if you are poor and you have no education. The iman of the religious authority of your region is still there and say you that those values that, that uh, about the LGBT, et cetera, are bad. Your parents have a strong opinion about that, even if they have uh, they, they don't know how to read, they have a strong opinions about the homosexuality, about sexual liberation, because it's part of their culture. And thirdly, you have live in a conservative society which pressure you every day. You spend like 20 hours a day with those people. Your parents are very important for you. Iman is very important for you. When you have any doubt about, uh, about homosexuality, about, uh, about adoctrination, you don't go to the app. You go to your parents. You go to these people. Even if in the best case of open opposition, you are moderate and you live in a moderate environment, you have other sources to give you this moderate view. You have social groups uh, that, that support uh, LGTB people. You have uh, like political parties which are liberal. The point is that doctrine is free. Most people give it by free 
because they want to convince you that they are right. Meanwhile, formal education, you have to pay for it and it's scarce. When you are a kid in Bangladesh, you have a lot of sources of doctrination. Therefore, you are going to pay zero attention to these videos. Therefore, they are irrelevant. Therefore, it doesn't matter if they stay or not. Meanwhile, the formal education is extremely important for you because you have no other source. I think that this clarifies why uh, the, the wash and open open one last rebuttal to open opposition which is uh, this is not a debate about the state the state has no duty here the motion says that this platform has to drop the videos the state is sending no message because the platform dropped the, 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 the videos Bangladesh is sending no message at all everyone is going to still think the same about the government about the state so the final comparative of, uh, uh, with the, with open opposition is that we win for two factors. First of all, because the impact of the educational videos are higher than the impact of the uh, of the adoptionation videos. Therefore, every person that we lose is losing more than the person that, that, that they win in their side of the house. And secondly, and crucially, Antonio also explained why it is important and is a, a precondition to have an educated society before having um, a, a, a society that is liberal. I, 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 I I dare the, the, the closing opposition to mention societies that are not educated, but are very liberal. They're going to find very, very little ones. It's a prior, a, a, a prior to have an educated society in order to therefore be liberal. So the conclusion of, uh, of this point is that before uh, the, the, the people doesn't love LGTB and accept them for a couple of videos, they accept them after years of education and developing the country. Now, going to closing opposition, they have two main points. The first point is that the damage is already done. Bangladesh is very traditional society and therefore once they, the, the, the parents see that you have the, these videos uh, about homosexuality, etc., they are going to uh, ban them for the child anyway, even if you drop them now. I have two rebuttals for them. First of all, I think that this is a blandly lie. I think that the parents are going to ban this to the kids because they think that they are going to be adoctrinated. That if they see this, they are going to think that gays are good people and they're going to think that sexual liberation is something good. If they don't see the, this threat, therefore they are not going to continue banning this. I think that this is pretty normal. Most of the people in the world have friends that are from a different ideology. For example, I'm very liberal. If my mother knows that I'm meeting with a religious per, uh, parents, they will say, okay, that's okay. But there will not be okay if that mother is saying to me every time that I have to believe in Jesus Christ and I have to hate uh, gay people. So the problem is not that the platform thinks a way, but the way that they adoctrinate. And secondly, I think that the scandal continues and increases with every video. So more and more pressure is put over the parents to ban this platform, every video that they publish. If they stop in publishing these videos, this point is going to stop the pressure. The Iman is going to stop saying, uh, uh, talking about this platform because it's not anyway a, a trending topic and therefore there will be no more banning. Before this, POI to OO. Okay, so if it is true that people still want to be educated and they have no other sources, as you say, then clearly they have a necessity to watch these videos. And the only difference is then that they keep watching the other videos but don't watch videos on consent. The only delta in this debate then is the standard of how free education should be, and at least some people being exposed to these ideals, which changes social discourse in general. I think that I already battled that. They are going to have very, very, very uh, a good exposition to these videos, but they're, they're all, the, the other videos are not going to be there. And even if they are there, they are not going to be effective. I think that the rebuttal to those PI was integrated. Last point of closing opposition was the support of the West. I have a lot of problems with this. First of all, I don't really care about the support of the West for many reasons. First of all, they already say that the Bangladesh society is very traditional. I prefer to have the support of my society, of my country, of my state, which can help me in much more ways than the West. I mean, the West is cool, but it's better to have the support of your own society inside. Secondly, I think that the money and all those kind of stuff, first of all, is non-comparative. Also, conservative people have money, and probably they also give money to this platform if they are not elite. TV supporters, but will stop doing this if they continue putting videos. But even if they win some money, I don't really care about money in here. The content of this platform is already good. They don't need a lot of money to have better and better content. They do not explain why the money is so important in this debate. They already have the content on the platform. What they need is people watching their videos in order to be educated. I don't care if they win more money. They are not educating people so well as they should. So the conclusion of this debate is clear. Parents are going to be banning the children for this uh, for, for this platform. Education is going to be worse, and the videos about liberals are completely relevant. We win on this metric, and we're very proud to propose. Thank you. We thank the member of the government whip rather very much. To conclude the opposition bench and the debate as a whole, I'm very happy to call upon the opposition whip.
Uh, am I audible? Uh, just a second. Uh, okay, I will start now. So first of all, I want to uh, I want to start my speech by explaining what is actually the actual problem with with this debate from the government stance. First of all, they actually I feel like they actually never engaged with their actual burden. They never explained to us why if we just uh, remove these videos, why all of a sudden the whole society is going to change and the the people are going to uh, going to watch our video. They actually give us analysis why the people watch our videos anyway. They explain to us, they give us a shit ton of analysis why people are, are going to watch these videos, I, I feel like either way. What, what, what does this actually mean? This actually means that there is no impact, there, there is no tangible impact on their side because they never explain to us how are we, are we increasing the number of people that are watching our videos if we remove them? Are we, uh, are we, are we, are we returning the people that have left from us because we are, uh, uh, we are removing these videos? They ever, never engage with the analysis and they never actually meet, meet their burden. And this is why I think the whole opposition wins, uh, wins over the government. But moreover, moreover about the uh, about one crucial, crucial, uh, important piece of frame. What do we tell you from the closing government? Once you are labeled as somebody who is against your traditional rights, once you are labeled as somebody who is against your way of living, you are much more likely to stay that way. This means that even if you remove these things, you are still going to be labeled. You are still going to be guilty by association. You are still going to have all the bad impacts even if you remove this. Why is this really important when we are talking about actual threats, which is the core case about opening government? This means we prove to you that even if they uh, decide to remove this, this won't stop the threats because they we agree they are public companies they are they are not they have a lot of influence but just because they have that a lot that influence over the society this means that these people are feel attacked and this this attack won't stop because somebody removed it and they never actually prove why it would stop so basically we win we win that argument by just providing you any analysis why that won't stop and this is what we do second is i don't understand why the closing op opposition is focusing just on the children just on the children and parents this is not the only people that are using these platforms first of all uh, the, the info slide clearly says that it is pro it provides a lot of uh, things that are necessary to your life like uh, writing a cv and things like that what does this mean this means that actually the the big group of people are actually going to be young adults adults that are on average more liberal and actually have a tendency for liberal liberal ideas and uh, and things like that this means that they are probably going to engage in those things i don't understand why they are necessary focusing focusing the debate just uh, uh, just uh, just on children but moreover they provide to us literally all the, we, we don't need to have any analysis why people will stay on this platform because they provide it for us. This means that we are not losing anything by, by, uh, by, by removing these, uh, these things. Second is about, uh, about the uh, opening, uh, opening government. Okay, uh, uh, okay. About, uh, about the, the, the people that the, now our employees will leave and our, uh, our employees are going to fear. First of all, when you have did something like this, and when the backlash happened, and when you already have uh, been engaged in threats by your life, you are actually going to fear either way. You are actually going to fear ab about your life, and you are actually going to decide then if you are going to leave the job or not. You are not going to decide it if in a, um, a two, if you receive a threat which is immediate, you can lose your life right now. This means that you are not going to decide in two months when these videos uh, are uh, removed and things like that, that you are going to, to leave that job. You are going to decide that right then when you, you, when you receive that, uh, when you receive the threats, uh, uh, threat. So some people, will, uh, some people will actually live on our side of the house. Some people will live on, the, uh, on their side of the house, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't engage with the, the, the motion and it doesn't, it doesn't prove anything to, uh, to, uh, to us. Uh, the second is uh, the second is um, 
about uh, about the the government they they now say that government uh, gov governments will probably be against you okay we agree but they are already in the status quo against you if we take into account their analysis about uh, how these people influence the government this means that they influence the government in the moment that that happened they, they are not going to influence them in the long run it is much more likely that in the long run that influence is going to be washed it is more likely that in the long run this influence is going to fall off and uh, that uh, things are going to normalize and especially when we need to take into account that that area is turbulent that more new problems occur every day and that new topics become relevant this means that but uh, as the time passes this will this will become less and less relevant and pressures and threats are going to be uh, uh, going to be less second uh, the third the third point is about uh, about people won't give the money okay uh, people won't give the money they are going to be guilty by association but removing these videos uh, like three videos is not going to solve this if we are losing people we are losing them on both sides of the house but what we give you is international support what we give you is international investors and my partner proved to you how these things are going to look and how this is going to uh, impact the debate lastly i want to explain why do we actually go over, uh, why do we actually go over our opening opposition first of all we never claim that these uh, we never claim that these uh, these these schools are going to uh, i don't know somehow change the perception of, of how these people people see uh, see other how how this society sees each other no we uh, we exp uh, we explain to you we uh, we explain to you what is the incentive for the international community how uh, how this is uh, how uh, this is going to uh, to look like uh, and second what they never explained to us is what is the incentive uh, what is the incentive for this uh, in order for their changes to happen in order for things to uh, to di differentiate they need a lot of time this means that they need to provide more content in the uh, more content in the future but they never provide to us the mechanisms of what are the incentives for that for that organization to provide uh, to provide more uh, more content like this in order for things to change we say on closing opposition that we provide to you by our metrics of international support about the donations and things like that we provide incentives for these organizations to actually talk talk about this uh, about this problem or in order for any change to happen on the closing government on the on, on the on the opening opposition what uh, what does this actually actually mean it means that we provide an essential mechanisms in order for any of their uh, any of their case to, to work because we all agree uh, the whole debate agrees that people will still stay on this platform no matter what the whole teams agree with i think that we gave you the most tangible impacts of this and this is why we win we think the Opposition whip very much, and indeed all the speakers for a fine round of debating. I believe. Uh, Guys, you can stay here. I will make a make a breakout room for judges. Thank you very much. Yeah, I already invited you, so you can go there. Uh, thanks for the debate, everyone. Thank you everyone for the debate. We are staying here, yes? Yes, you can stay here. Yes.